Hey everybody, it's Frankie and Pat from Edge Power, and today we're going to talk about how to put a distributor in the right way, the first time, and every time. Now this is a subject that a lot of people aren't understanding and get it wrong a lot of the times and they throw that big fireball out the carburetor or the engine doesn't start. So we're going to do it right the first time we're going to get you hooked up. Now, before we do anything, we'd like you to like, subscribe, and click that bell to get future notifications on all the cool stuff we do. So let's start with the basics. What is ignition timing? Ignition timing is when the spark plug fires relative to the piston's position in the bore. And we usually measure this in crankshaft degrees. So when we're talking about ignition advance, it is the crankshaft degrees before the piston reaches top dead center that the spark plug fires, igniting that air fuel mixture. Now, whether you're talking about a old build or a fresh build, that spark has to be timed appropriately to get the max combustion, the max cylinder pressure, and the max power out of the fuel air mixture. And if we're talking about distributors, not only do they rotate and distribute the spark to each cylinder, but they also control when the coil fires and ignites that spark. So it's essential that we get these timed correctly so that the engine will start up when you hit the key. Like any process, you have to start from somewhere. So we already have our distributor out of our engine. So to put the distributor in correctly, we have to put it in the proper place. And that means it has to be at a compression stroke on number one cylinder. To be able to find that, we're gonna pull the spark plug out so we can find its position on the engine. So we're gonna pull number one spark plug completely out. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the engine. Now, the engine can be in two different spots because the crankshaft turns twice to the camshaft turning once. So the distributor has to be in the proper position relative to where the crankshaft and the valves are being timed. So I'm gonna actually take my finger and stick it in the spark plug hole. And we're gonna rotate the engine over until air comes out of this cylinder. Now, there's two places that the camshaft can be. One is top dead center on compression and the other is top dead center on overlap top dead center compression stroke, both valves are closed. On overlap, the exhaust valve is open and slightly on the way to being closed, and the intake valve is already open, so there's actually free air coming through. So when both valves are closed, prominently air will be pushed on the cylinder just like that. So that means we are coming up on top dead center, number one, on a compression stroke. And when we do that, we'll look down here at the balancer. As air was coming out, we start looking for our timing mark. So right there, that line coming up right there, that is top dead center for our balancer. That is where the cylinder is gonna be at TDC when this mark reaches our timing pointer, which will be zero. That way with air coming out of the cylinder and that mark right there, that confirms we are on top dead center on a compression stroke on our number one cylinder. Now, keep in mind, engines don't fire at TDC of a compression stroke. Usually, there is advance in the timing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep that timing mark at zero before a little bit in the engine's rotation, and we're gonna stop. On our case, this is a mark that designates 30 degrees before top dead center. We are gonna stop there and not go to TDC, and we're gonna stop right there. That verifies that we are at 30 degrees before top dead center on our compression stroke, and then we can put in our distributor. All right, so our engine is in the right position, but we need to get our distributor in the right position before we can put it in. So this is a aftermarket HEI for a small block Ford, but like Pat said, this is the same process for virtually any engine with any distributor. We have the cap on because we want to determine how the housing is gonna sit in the engine. Basically, we're just trying to make sure it's gonna clear anything around it, like our vacuum advance port isn't gonna hit something, and we, we can actually turn the distributor to adjust the ignition timing once we get it in. So ours is gonna virtually sit in like this, and then we gotta determine which terminal is number one. We're gonna use this one back here. Usually this is just based off wire routing, what we think looks best on the engine. But once we know which one is number one, we're gonna mark the base where the number one terminal goes, just like that, okay? Once we have that, we don't need this cap for a little bit. So we'll take this, and now we can actually drop it in the engine. So. The idea is that we want the rotor to line up with that mark once the distributor is fully seated, but we have to account for the cam gear and the distributor gear because as they mesh, the rotor's gonna rotate, and so we wanna give it a little bit of lead in as we drop it in. Now the base is not going down all the way, and sometimes this is where people freak out. It's actually not a big deal. 
It's just the oil pump drive is not synced up in the engine. They're not lined up, so it can't seat all the way. But you don't have to pull the distributor back out. All you have to do is rotate the engine over and apply downward pressure to the base until they line up. Kind of apply some pressure and wiggle it, and boom, it fully seats. So now you've turned the engine over a little bit. All you got to do is turn it around one or two full revolutions, one revolution of the rotor, and this is going to help us verify that it's in the right spot. So once he gets that turned around, it's coming back up on TDC compression stroke. We'll get it set to our 30 degrees before top dead center, and our rotor should be very close to our mark. All right, so that's 30 before TDC. Now, if this was a locked out distributor, meaning it had no mechanical advance, we could just line the rotor up, set it, lock it down and it would be good. But this distributor does have mechanical advance, which has springs and weights inside that as the RPM increases, it actually advances the ignition timing, which is what this play right there is. Now where it's sitting right now is what's called initial timing or base timing. And that is without any mechanical advance. We are gonna set it based off the total timing or the timing once all that mechanical advance comes in, which is actually here. So we'll hold that like that and we'll rotate the housing until the rotor lines up with the number one mark that we placed on the base. Once we get it lined up very close, we can go ahead, put it in our distributor clamp and lock it down. And this is gonna get you within five degrees of where you're targeting, which for us is 30. We're gonna be extremely close to that right on startup. So this will get you close. And when we, once we get the engine running, we can use a timing light and actually set the timing for real. We're ready now, we can put the cap on, it's in the right spot, but you're only halfway there. What you have to remember is you have to know the firing order of the engine you are working on and the direction of the rotor's rotation because it gets kind of confusing. You can have the right firing order, but wire it wrong. There's a lot of things that can go wrong up until this point. So what we're gonna make sure we do is we know the firing order of this engine. This particular engine is a late model 302 Ford. Well. Between an early 302 and a late 302, there is a firing order change. This one is the later model, so the firing order is 1372-6548. And we know, because we are watching the rotor as we're turning the engine in its proper direction, that the rotor turns counterclockwise. When you're working on a Chevy, it actually turns the opposite way, it turns clockwise. 18436572 is its firing order. So as long as you know your firing order and the direction of the rotation of your rotor, you are good to go. So it's time we'll put the spark plug wires on one at a time in the firing order in the proper direction. There are some pre-made spark plug wires up and we're gonna get this thing on and get it running. But first, we better put our spark plug back in. I need that. It all starts with one, and we know well that's designated, so away we go. We're gonna go three. You have to know how a Ford is numbered as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chevrolet is one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. So obviously gotta know how the engine is numbered from the factory. Six. Nice. Yeah, uh, I think these will work. Five. Four. Four. Pre-made sets are usually pretty easy because if you do make a mistake, you can just take them off and switch them. A lot of times we'll build custom wires for engines so we can make them look exactly how we want and shape them really nicely. And that is when it's really important because if you mess it up, you've already cut it, you've already made it to length and everything. So that one, you really have to be careful. These, if you do make a mistake, not a big deal. You can just take them off and switch them around until you find what works best. Make sure everything is clicked down as well because you can get all the way through all of them and not have a complete connection made on the wire and it'll have a misfire, so. Our engine starts right up just like it's supposed to. No drama, no fireball. To set the initial timing, we will remove the vacuum advance line to the distributor and cap it just to eliminate any chance of a vacuum leak. Timing is always set with the vacuum advance disconnected. 
Most manufacturers will post initial timing settings underneath the hood of old cars, but for our example, we're just gonna start with 12 degrees initial. We're using a dial back timing light, so with the distributor hold down slightly loose, we can rotate the distributor to advance or retard the timing until the TDC mark on the balancer lines up with the timing pointer. Then you can tighten the distributor clamp, and reconnect the vacuum advance, and you're done. If you're setting total timing instead of initial, it's a different process, but we'll adjust our timing light setting accordingly, and then with the vacuum advance still unhooked, we have to increase the RPM until all of the mechanical timing is engaged, which on this engine is about 5,000 RPM. You can then adjust the distributor in the same manner to get our timing mark on the balancer again, lined up with the timing pointer. If you don't have an adjustable timing light, the process is the same, but you have to have clear and accurate timing marks on the balancer to reference. Once it's set, the throttle can be pulled back and the distributor clamp can be tightened down. All right, so there you go. That is how we put a distributor in every single one of our builds. And if you follow those steps, you will get it in the right time every time. And we hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit. Make sure you subscribe to Power Nation to see all our latest videos.